if you have a cuckoo quail clock or even a cuckoo clock that has a count wheel on it or Herbert Herr style clocks, this is a Herbert Herr cuckoo quail clock with a count wheel. But if you have an antique cuckoo clock that has these little trip levers on them, they're side doors. Um, but if you, you have a clock that is the bird, either the quail or the cuckoo is not stopping. One of the most simplest thing that you could do before you put the clock in time, when I say in time, the second wheel, this lever that I'm moving, this brass lever here, this lever here, it's got a notch on it that goes into the second wheel cam. And then at the same time, there's a third wheel. There's a pin that hits a tab. Can you see that pin? There's a pin on the third wheel that hits a tab on this lever right here when the clock is done chirping however this bird post arm this arm right here is called the bird post that's the post that the bird whether it's the quail or the cuckoo rests on it has a wire right here it also has a spring on it. There's two purposes behind that spring. One is to bring this bird post back in uh, inside the case. The other is to hit this trip lever. This trip lever is what starts the uh, bird into action. It is part of this lever right here on this Herbert Herr, on an antique clock, this would be a wire. But if I was to move this, you could see that it is part of this lever, which goes into the count wheel. It is this lever, which goes into the cam. And it is this lever, which is that wire. It's all one unit. If this bird post wire is on the opposite side, and if you got this thing connected to the door, it will sit there and quail all day long possibility because it it has to be underneath this trip wire. That way, that spring can, when I pull, pull on this, it is pulling this lever down into the count wheel. Same way on the cuckoo side. This bird post wire has to be in between the trip wire and the plate. So if you are having issues with your clock not stopping its cuckoo or its quail, it keeps chirping, one of the first things that you need to look at is to make sure that this trip wire is on the outside of the bird post wire. And then, if it's still not stopping its cuckoo or quail, then you need to look at other things. And I have a video on a count wheel type movement that discusses what happens 
when the clock goes into warning and what happens when it's done cuckooing. They're all basically the same system. In this case, the trip lever has a wire that goes over it, which helps push that um, lever down into the count wheel. And same way over here on this side, that's because Herbert Herr made a wire that goes on top of those levers, but not all manufacturers put that wire on, on um, top of those levers, and that is what the bird post wire helps do. It helps bring that lever down into the cam to stop it from cuckooing or the quail from chirping. And by the way, um, somebody thought that there was two pins on this third wheel warning wheel. So I'm going to trip this thing and then I'm going to uh, slow the third wheel down. There's a pin right there. And that's the only pin that's on this third wheel warning wheel. There's only one. Some clocks have two. This one has one. And I don't know if I could get to the uh, quail. Anyway, there's one pen on the Cuckoo third wheel warning wheel. Uh, some clocks have got two, and you have to, when, you, when the Cuckoo is done cuckooing, you have to make sure that the third wheel warning wheel This one might have a pen inside. I'm going to have to look, so stand by. I know I put this thing in timing. The third wheel warning wheel has two pens. However, one is on the inside going toward the front, and that's the, the pen that catches the this system the lever and everything when it's all stops cuckooing and then this pen is what stops the cuckoo from cuckooing when the quail is doing its thing You will also notice on this clock that the weights, they're not your normal weight for the uh, bellows. And this is also the one for the quail bellow that I made uh, using lead weights from uh, brake calipers sorry from uh, tires but uh, they're pretty cool I have a leak in this bellow. 
I'm gonna have to uh, check that out. But this bellow sounds great. The quill bellow sounds great, but the low note bellow don't sell don't sell them that great. But there are three pens on the count wheel for the uh, quail side. One, two, and three. And as that quail is tripped, those three pens brings this arm down to uh, activate the cuckoo. And this wire has to be bent just right to activate the cuckoo. I'm going to open up that wire so I can show you what happens if it's wrong. Here you can see I have the wire that this lever here goes inside and when I when I bring it down it it doesn't work properly so now we're going to trip the quail And as you can see, the cuckoo didn't work when the quail uh, tripped the hour. We're going to trip the quail again. And as you can see, the cuckoo didn't work when I tripped the hour. That's because the wire is spread too far apart. Now I'm going to spread, I'm going to close this wire some. I'm not going to close it all the way because I'm trying to create something. As you see, there's the pin on the quail that's bringing this lever down. It didn't trip the cuckoo that time. And it didn't trip the cuckoo that time. So I'm going to squeeze the wire down some more. Again, I'm trying to recreate something. There's a guy in the group that it takes pushing on this lever twice in order to activate the cuckoo. So, he might have to squeeze his wires, close his wires some more. I'm going to open up these wires just a little bit. Again, I'm trying to recreate what's going on with this guy's clock. Uh, 
that's not going to do it. Because what's happening on his, the third wheel warning wheel will go into warning on the first time it's supposed to uh, cuckoo. And then on the second time it's supposed to cuckoo, it will actually cuckoo. But so far, I haven't created that scenario. But I think in his case, It might have created this situation that time. I'm going to do it again to see what happens. In his case, the third wheel warning wheel spins a little bit. Uh, in my case, it didn't. Well, let me do this again. Okay, so I, I recreated what's going on with his clock. And what is going on with his clock is this wire was not closed enough. So I'm going to show it to you one more time. Cheryl, you hit it on the head. It should cuckoo this time around. But it doesn't. It went into warning. It should cook you this time around. And it does. Um, do it one more time. It should cook you this time around. And it does. So, maybe not the issue with this clock. I'm going to close my wire back up. That way it cuckoos every time. And I still think with his, 
it's the timing of the clock. It's either this lever that goes into the count wheel is not bent properly. And as you can see, mine is bent to where it's, it goes straight up and down um, on the uh, count wheel. Um, the third wheel warning wheel, the pen... That's facing toward us. It is about in the two two thirty position. The other pen, I know, is touching the lever that's attached that goes into the cam on the second wheel. It's touching the the lever on the outside of the lever that goes into the cam on the second wheel so uh, I don't think his is set up properly but it could also be he needs to squeeze this wire in some because if you don't have that wire squeezed in properly it will not allow the cuckoo. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up and may God bless each and every one of you.